you're here I don't know who you're coming to see what you're coming to see but I do know that the Lord sent us out here to preach the gospel message to you I know that the Lord is after someone because you know and I know someone can still hear me behind this big bus you know the Lord is after the 99 he actually says that he leaves the 99 to go after the one lost sheep he leaves the 99 to go after that one lost sheep and if you would have just know, if you would just know how God sent us here today, you would also be convinced that someone has departed from the Lord here, that the Lord is after you. Yeah. Out of all these people. Yeah. I think wow. you're why we came. Yeah, because I, I mean, don't the deserve that, you know, like, and I know that I don't deserve that. That's not, yeah. Well, well, the Lord is after you. That's what yeah. That's what and go right here. Praise God. We're gonna get drizzled on by this tree though. I'll do it. It'll be alright. You might have to set this thing up on the yeah. Then you hold the speaker. Good grief. That's a lot of people. Thank you, Lord, for leading us here. Wow, I was not expecting this at all. That is good, bro. here and they're like go home no one wants to hear it yeah go ahead and put it on all righty is that gonna be okay with the moon i guess you're gonna be holding it huh? yeah kind of somewhat you wanna oh yeah there's people expecting something against what? They rise against the used. I don't know if that's some type of... I think this is some like old theater or something. I don't know what this is. Um, do you want to preach first? Okay. Praise the Lord. Oh, my friends, we come out here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Because this world is against the gospel, the gospel, the true gospel message of Jesus Christ. How many of you claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ and walk in sin and live in sin? Because you can't serve God and yourself. And you know, this message may sound foolish to you, but the Bible says that the, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Oh, my friends, why are you so against the gospel message? Why do you, why do you hate us because we proclaim the truth to you? <clears throat> oh, my friends, the Bible says that mockers will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible also says that hypocrites will not inherit the kingdom of God. They'll be divided asunder. So someone who claims to follow Jesus yet live in sin is a hypocrite someone who is continual in continual disobedience to god he commands you to repent he commands you to forsake your sin to follow him with all of your hearts 
And my friends, if the gospel message isn't true, it wouldn't provoke you to anger. It wouldn't provoke you to anger because if we were to preach Santa Claus to you, you know that Santa Claus isn't true. So you just keep walking. But my friends, many of you are convicted of your sin. You're convicted over what is wrong, over the things that you're doing in your life that are sinful. And my friends, one day you will give an account for it all. One day you'll have to stand before the judge, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha and the Omega. But the question to you is, are you ready? Are you ready to stand and give an account for everything you've done? Because my friends, we're not too far off. We're not too far off from Jesus coming back. Jesus Christ will come back to judge this world in righteousness. In fact, he actually says that he's ready to judge this world. But my friends, not many of you are ready to be judged. But Jesus Christ, all proud looks will be brought low on that day. All proud looks. And there's many proud looks. And in fact, God says that he hates a proud look. Someone who has the, the aroma of knowing better than God. The persona of their, of their will be done rather than God's will be done. You know, that's why Jesus Christ came. He came to set an example that Christians are to follow. And some people bring up quote unquote Christians in the past, like the Crusades and the Catholics, that that's what Christianity is all about. But my friends, well, why don't you practice what you preach? Why don't you practice what you preach? You see the hypocrisy? You say, love thy neighbor, you B word. That's what you said to me. Why would you say that and not practice what you're preaching? It's because you're a hypocrite. We would never come out here and curse you out because we don't even know any of you. And for you to call someone a B word that you don't even know just shows the hatred in your heart. That's what it shows. And my friends, we don't hate you. If we truly hated you, we wouldn't be spreading this gospel message to you. What about the book? I don't know who's talking. Read, read, read what book? Read the Bible? Well, why don't you read it and apply it? Why don't you read it and apply it? Because it's one thing looking at the bar of soap in the shower, and it's another thing actually applying it. Because if you take a shower and just look at the bar of soap, just examine it, it's not gonna clean you. And same thing with the Word of God. If you just say, read the Word of God and don't apply it, it won't do anything to you. So my friends, we've already taken the speck out of our eye to see clearly to pull the speck out of yours. So you telling us to do the same with a speck in your eye, my friends, that makes you a hypocrite, especially with that, that young woman that said, love thy neighbor, you B word. And my friends, that's not loving your neighbor to call them a B word. You're not gonna stand on the day of judgment, sir. Your mockery will not stand. You actually have to give an account for that. You think it's really funny right now? But when you stand and you see how sinful, how wicked that was, you'll be ashamed for your sin. No. You need to repent. And, and in fact, many of you know that this stuff is sinful. You're just doing this to be, mock, to be a mocker. My friends, you know that, that sexual immorality will send you straight to hell. Well, repent of it because it's wicked. Repent of all your sin. You know, there's so many filthy minds out here. You know, when someone tells an innocent joke in today's culture, they instantly think about how perverted it could be. And my friends, that's the, that's the day and age that we live in where people's minds are corrupt, where people's minds are so filthy and so dirty. But my friends, you need a cleansing, you need a washing from the blood of Christ. Can we help you, sir? I need a lot of most high. You're, you're not the most high. See, a lot of people think that they're God. A lot of people think that they're God themselves. But my friends, if you're God, then start creating stuff from nothing. 
because that's what God does. I'm so tired of people saying that they are God when they can't even prove it that they're God. If you're truly God, will you start creating something from nothing like God did? My friends, these new age occultic beliefs will not get you into the kingdom of heaven. And my friends, we bring, a, we bring the true gospel of Christ to you. It may sound foreign to a lot of you who've only heard the loving side of Jesus growing up in church and not the whole counsel of God. But we bring the whole counsel of God because a lot of people in America only know that Jesus loves them. They don't know that he has a wrath. He, they don't know that he's holy, that he's righteous, that he's ready to judge this world in righteousness. And my friends, if we were not to preach the whole counsel of God to you, we would be in heresy. We would be in error. And that's why we bring the true gospel of Christ to you. That you would not walk away with the wrong Jesus. Because Jesus actually says there would be many false Christ in the last days in Matthew 24, verse 24. He says that there would be many false Christ. Beware to not be deceived. And how many people are believing in a wrong Jesus? Oh, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. Jesus would not judge people. Well, how do you explain Judgment Day, where he'll judge everything that you have done? We live in a, a day and age where a lot of people are so offended, where they think that the preaching of the cross is hate. But the preaching of the cross is only hateful to those who hate the truth. And if you hate the truth, of course you're going to hate it. If you hate, if you hate Jesus, of course you're going to hate the message. That's why people come up with the wrong Jesus to suit their own sinful lifestyles. My friends, we, we're not offended when someone mocks us. Even when someone cowardly says something as walking by. You know, just to, just to ease your nerves, we Christians do not come out here to fight. True born again believers do not fight. So you, you don't have to do the drive by comments. You don't have to say something and hide. Because we actually want to talk to you. We want to actually have a dialogue. But so many people are so cowardly. And the Bible actually says in Revelation 21.8 that the cowardly will not inherit the kingdom of God. That they'll go to the lake of fire. And even liars. Because every single one of us is lied. Well, you didn't hear what I just said. Everyone, everyone has lied, yes. But that's why Jesus came. That's why we're out here. We're not here to point out just the sin, but, but the cure. We're not here to just expose the disease without the cure. Jesus Christ is that cure. Just like a good doctor wouldn't just say, hey, you have, you have stage four lung cancer, and then just sends you home. My friends, just like with us, we come here to proclaim the gospel, to show you why you need the good news, to show you why you need to repent. And a lot of people don't see their need for Jesus. And you know why? Because they think that, that the delayed judgment of God means an absence of it. And just because God is slow to anger, just because God hasn't judged you and sent you to hell is because he loves you. It doesn't mean that, that he won't do it. It doesn't mean that God will not send you. You know, Jesus actually says that he'll come back on a white horse. He'll come back on a white horse to take judge to take judgment upon those who do not know God, to make war with those who do not know God. You know, in here in America, people are so independent. And you know, God actually says, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom. You're not God. You wouldn't say that if you were. You're not God. You're not God. No. That, create something then. Create something. Okay, that's what I thought. Because that's what God does. God, God not only says that he's God, but he, he proves it. A lot of people say they're God and they can't prove it. So stop making the claim that you are God when you're not. My friends... Jesus Christ proved that he is God in flesh. He proved it by rising from the dead. How many of you can rise from the dead? None of us can rise from the dead. But we will rise. His saints will rise because he has risen already. But you will also rise. If you, if you do go to hell, you will also rise 
but it won't be something to be joyful about. It'll actually be the second resurrection and everyone will be lined up to go to hell. And that's why we're out here. We don't want you to be lined up to go to hell. Like many of you are lined up to go to this. I don't even know what this is, whatever this is. I don't know why you're here. I don't know who you're coming to see, what you're coming to see. But I do know that the Lord sent us out here to preach the gospel message to you. I know that the Lord is after someone because you know, and I know someone can still hear me behind this big bus. You know, the Lord is after the 99. He actually says that he leaves the 99 to go after the one lost sheep. He leaves the 99 to go after that one lost sheep. And if you would have just know, if you would just know how God sent us here today, you would also be convinced that someone has departed from the Lord here, that the Lord is after you. My friends, Jesus Christ wants to set you free from your sin. He wants to set you free from your sin. You know, why are my people so bent on backsliding, says the Lord. Why are you so bent on backsliding? Why are you so full of your own ways? Don't you know that your ways will lead you to hell? But there is only one way, only one way indeed that will lead to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. You know, there's a million ways to hell. There's billions of ways to hell. And you know, the Bible also says that there's, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. The end of that man's life is death. Because the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You know the paycheck that you'll receive for a sinful life? Well, here it is, it's death. And you know, just like you spend so nonchalantly at a very nice restaurant and you're not expecting what that bill is gonna look like, that's how many of you treat your life. You live this life so sinfully, but one day you'll have a bill at the end of this life and it'll be something that you're not willing to pay. But you know, someone who has paid it already is Jesus. And he can, he can pay it off for you today. He can set you free from your bondage today. He can cleanse you from your sin today. But you must come to him. You know, it's not automatic that everyone's saved just because of what Jesus did on the cross. You know, you actually have to walk through the doorway of salvation. Because every single one of you are in a spiritual dark room right now. And there's only one way out of that room, and that's through the doorway of salvation. You see, in that darkness, you can't see what you're going to, what, what you're going to do next. You can't see. Typically, in a dark room, you don't know what's before you. You trip over things. You you knock your 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 feet on on sharp corners because you can't see. But as soon as you turn on a lamp, you can see, and that's exactly what Jesus can do to your life. He can be that light, because none of us know when we're gonna die. I bet none of you have on your calendar when you're gonna die. And if you did, I doubt you would be here. I hope you wouldn't be here. If you only had one more day, two more days to live, how would you spend your life? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you would, sir. If you, if you got struck with sobriety about your life, you know, it really won't be funny on the day of judgment. You saying all these things to us does not offend us one bit. We're not going to go and pack up our bags and go cry in a corner and have a pity party. My friends, what you say to us does not offend us one bit. And you can't say one thing to deter us. And my friend... Oh. Uh, one of the ladies just flashed this. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. Well, I'm glad I didn't. But my friends, you'll be judged for that. You'll be judged for, for flashing the preacher because Jesus Christ, you know, it really takes a woman that's so degraded, so degraded to show her boobs out in public. You see how wicked you are? And you know, what, what'd you say? What'd you say? One, one, first Peter, first Peter 3, one, read it. First Peter 3, one. 2 Timothy 2.11, read it. Well, you want to have a dialogue, sir? Don't be a coward. We don't fight. Don't be a coward. You see, many people want to say something, but they say it when they're walking away. 
So many people are cowards. And ma'am, you're acting very whorish. That's what you're acting. That's what you're acting like. You, you wanna act like one, I'm gonna call it out for what it is. And, and you know, many women, many women in fact, many women, they, they wonder why their hearts get broken so easily. But my friends, listen to this. If you dress like a business, you're gonna get business. And that's the truth. You, you, show, you show your boobs in public, you're gonna get business. That's what you're gonna get. And so many people are, so, are wondering why they get raped, why they get taken advantage of men, by men. It's the truth. It may sound controversial, but showing your boobs, showing your boobs is very wicked. Showing your boobs to a preacher is very wicked. Showing your, your, your boobs to anyone is wicked. That's not your husband or your wife. My friends, Jesus Christ, he says that marriage is between a man and a woman. Between a man and a woman alone. And I hope that woman feels ashamed for her sin because she will on the day of judgment if she doesn't today. You know, open rebuke is better than secret love carefully concealed. It's better than secret love. And you know, it really takes such degradation of sin to just flash a stranger in the, in, in, in the streets. You're wicked too. And you're a pervert. Your mind needs to be cleansed. Why are there so many perverts out here? Why, why are there so many perverts out here? You must want attention. You must want attention from a guy too. That's, that's, that's really weird. I don't go that way, sir. I don't go that way. Yeah, and do you know what happened after they sinned? They, they realized that they were naked and they had, to go, they had to cover up because that's what sin does. It brings shame. And sin, when it is fully grown, it brings forth death. And the wages of sin is death. What'd you say? So you're, you're, did you say hail Satan? Okay, well, you know, hailing the one that hates you, hailing Satan, don't you know that he, don't, don't you know that he hates you? Satan hates you. No, Jesus is, is the one that loves you. Well, if you love me, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that wickedness. No, you're, <laughs> did you not hear what just came out of your mouth? You call me a blasphemer, but you didn't hear what just came out of your mouth? You have blinders on, man. Take the blinders off to see clearly. You know, and that's what many people try to do. They try to judge you when they have blinders on. You know, I'm not against judgment as long as it's not hypocritical judgment. When someone falsely accused, yes, what's up? It's not about that. I, I don't come out here to boast what I've done because that's what the Pharisees did. And I'm not a Pharisee. It's about the message of the cross to save sinners from their sin. And in fact, the Bible actually does say that where the word of God is preached, it will not return void. So we don't know what goes on in people's hearts. In fact, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So I can't give you a definitive answer to your, your question. I can't sit down and count how many souls have been won through the cross or through the preaching of the cross. But it does say in type, you don't know that. Actually, it hasn't. Actually, it hasn't. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. It hasn't. And I'm not here to prove that to you either. I'm not here to sit down and, and tell you, hey, man, I, I, want, I want 80 souls for the Lord. You want to you wanna praise me now? I don't come out here for my own reputation. In fact, in the world's eyes, this damages people's reputation. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear what you said. But my friends, we're not out here to boast in, in our works. We're not out here to boast like the Pharisees did. Because you know, what made a, a Pharisee, a Pharisee is a hypocrite. Someone who claimed to love God, but they're secretly living in sin. And my friends, we would be damned. We would be damned to hell if that was us. And my friends, Jesus, he wants to set you free from your wickedness. He wants to set you free from all wickedness. But my friends, do you want to be set free? You know, there's many mockers out here. And it just shows us that so many people truly hate God. Because if God didn't exist, why are you getting so mad about it? 
because no one gets this mad when it comes around Christmas time when people worship this this Satan clause or the tooth fairy or the Easter bunny that does not lay eggs my friends people don't get offended when you when you say that and if Jesus is just a mere fairy tale then let us believe our fairy tale just keep going on you don't have to flash the preacher you don't have to curse us out oh he just believes his fairy tale okay let me believe my fairy tale then but my friends in the end you will give an account you will give an account for the wickedness you have done and my friends when someone does act out towards the preaching of the cross it just shows that you're convicted your soul is conflicted and convicted and my friends Jesus Christ he says in Hebrews it's appointed once for man to die and after this the judgment so you will live this life for how many years none of us know how many years we're gonna live on this world but you live your life here on earth as if you have a thousand years left but it could be required of you tonight you could die tonight and if you die tonight you won't remember this concert like I said I don't know who you're coming to see I don't know who's in here but my friends you won't remember this concert but you will remember this preaching of the cross you will remember the preacher that preached that pleaded with your soul to not go to hell because yes you do choose where you're gonna spend eternity God doesn't just pick a handful of people and say, okay, you're following me. He chooses us and we have to choose him back. And my friends, if you don't choose, if you don't choose to follow him, you're already choosing your own way. You're choosing your own destruction. Jesus Christ, he came to preach the gospel to bring sobriety to a wicked and perverse generation. And in fact, this generation is very wicked and perverse. And you prove it with your own lips, sir. And you know, Jesus actually says, by your words, you shall be justified. And by your words, you shall be condemned. So I, I, still, I still marvel at how sinners will mock the preacher and say all sorts of blasphemous things, but it doesn't offend us one bit. It doesn't offend us, it only offends your soul. It just stores up the wrath of God. So you're really just doing yourself a disservice. <laughs> oh my friends, many of you know the story of Noah, how he was a preacher of righteousness. And he was preaching to a generation that was so against God to where the minds the thoughts of men were continually evil. We're not there yet, but we're getting close to it. But my friends, Noah's generation, what made God pour out his wrath without mixture then is that the, the hearts, the thoughts of, the men, of men were just continually wicked. And you know, Noah was constantly preaching as he was building this ark. And he might have looked foolish to this generation that have never seen rain pour down, that have never seen a flood. But my friends, once that rain started pouring, I'm sure every one of them started second guessing, oh, we should have believed Noah. And you know, that's actually a foreshadow of the ark of safety of Jesus Christ, because he is that ark of safety. And one day God's wrath will be poured out and we may look foolish to you, but one day you'll know that what we're preaching, if you don't know now, is the truth and you know in fact God when he closed that door to the ark it says that God closed the door that it could not be opened and you know God's seeking out for for childlike faith for those to have childlike faith just like you believed Santa Claus when you grew up you didn't question it and I'm not saying it's a bad thing to question but I'm just saying there was innocence there. And that's what God is calling you back to is your innocence. Your innocence before God. Because a lot of people, they grew up, went to, went to school, 
met the wrong people, and then they, 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 they went into the wrong crowd, started sinning, and my friends, you may, you may have grown up to where you had to rebel to sin, but no matter the case, if you're living in sin, you need to repent. No matter, the, no matter the case, no matter what it is in your life, Jesus actually says if your right hand causes you to sin, to cut it off. And what he means by that is if there's anything sinful in your life, get it out of your life. If there's a sexual relation that needs to go, cut it out. You need to surrender. You need to surrender all your sin before God. Because you can't get right to come to God. You have to come to God to get right. What God is begging... Smoke what, meth and hail Satan! Why would you hail the one that hates you? That's foolish. Why would you hail Satan when he hates you? You know, Satan doesn't even deserve praise from wicked sinners like that. The one that died for you is the one that loves you, but you, you praise the one that hates you. You know how foolish that is? And like I said, that doesn't offend us. But I just call out the foolishness, the folly of praising the one that hates you. You know, in fact, Satan, his will for every single one of our lives is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that you may have life and life more abundantly. So to praise the one that hates you, how, how foolish that is. Because Satan, one day, one day you'll meet Satan. And my friends, you don't want to meet Satan. I'm sure many of you have had demonic encounters before where you've met demons playing with Ouija boards or, or visiting a psychic. There's all sorts of doors to trigger the demonic realm. But my friends, if you, if you mess with the demonic realm and, and you're bound by that, Jesus Christ, he can, he, can, he can set you free from that. He can set you free from, from those tormenting demons because my friend, I'm telling you from experience, I've had a witch cast spells on me before and I've, I've had demonic experiences after that. And you know, it really took Jesus and I'm sure there's probably witches out here, but my friends, Jesus Christ, he's a lot stronger. He's a lot stronger. And in fact, all the, all the power that you may think that you have, it's all, it's all given to you for a season. But it's no true power at all because the true power, you know, light will always triumph over darkness. If you turn on a lamp in a dark room, what wins? The light will always win. And likewise with Jesus. Jesus Christ will always win over your darkness and sin. Lies. What's, li what's a lie? Don't be a coward, sir. What's a lie? What's a lie? You just said the lie. Well, well, well that doesn't clarify, sir. You got to specify. See, people make bold claims. Oh, that's a lie, that's a lie. But you don't want to defend what you believe. Well, if you truly believe what you believe, you wouldn't have a problem defending it. My friends, we talk to atheists, agnostics, all other sorts of religious people. And my friends, Jesus Christ, he always triumphs. His truth cannot be, cannot be refuted. In fact, it's more foolish, even secular atheistic Scholars are saying that it's foolish for people who are atheists who say that Jesus never existed because there's just too much proof to say that he never existed. That's actual atheists saying that. Scholars that study this. And that's not just biblical scholars. But my friends, no atheist, no scholar, no secular scholar can disprove the resurrection. And that's what our whole faith rests on, is the resurrection. You look, you look up any video of scholars a biblical scholar versus a, a secular scholar trying to refute the resurrection. No scholar has ever been able to. In fact, these scholars that try to disprove the resurrection, they look foolish. They look like your average Joe trying to defend an argument on sinking sand. And my friends, the atheists that say Jesus never existed, well, your, your, own, your own atheist will call you foolish, the ones that actually are educated. Because Jesus actually did exist. It's historically proven. But my friends, why people don't want to call him their God is because if, it, if an atheist believes that there is a God, 
If they believe that the God of the Bible is true, then they, they realize that they have to give an account for their sin. And so it's like a coping mechanism. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna believe that nothing was out there. Now I can live like a heathen. Now I can live without any boundaries. Now I can have sex outside of marriage. Now I can smoke all the weed, drink all the beer I want. You see, I'm preaching to the choir now. You see, that's what people wanna do. They don't want boundaries. And you know, Jesus, he tells us that we have to forsake our sin. And you know, the reason why you may be an atheist, the reason why you're an agnostic, is because you, you love your sin. That's what Jesus said himself in John 3, 21. That you love your sin and hate the darkness. You, hate, you love your sin and hate God. You hate the light. Men love darkness and they hate the light. Because if you come to the light, your deeds will be exposed. Your evil deeds will be exposed. You know, and I'm glad you're honest about those who, who cheered because it really takes admitting it. It's really the first step besides humbling yourself. You gotta humble yourself before God now. You have to get right with God. You know, when someone humbles himself through the message, through, through, through the preaching of the cross, they're two steps away from becoming a Christian. They're two more steps away from becoming a Christian. And the next two steps is repenting and believe the gospel. Oh my friends, if Jesus was in this building, would you be in this line? Would you, would you be in this line, waiting this long? You know, and it's sad that we have to have security officers scanning people for weapons. And you know, in, in, in God's kingdom, that will never be a thing. You won't have to worry about thieves or murderers or rapists or pedophiles because all those people will be in hell. But my friends, we live in a really wicked world to where in, in the world's eyes to enjoy a good time, quote unquote, they have to have all these, these lines of security just to enjoy it, just to get to a, a place through an airplane, through an airline. You need to go through all sorts of security measures just to get to it. And my friends, this is why we have hope in the kingdom to come. Because this world is trying to this this world is trying to build their kingdom here. They're trying to they're trying to build this world into the kingdom that it that it will never be. But Jesus Christ, he's going to establish a kingdom that shall have no end. A kingdom where no thief will be in, where no sin will be in. Because my friends, Jesus, when you, come to, when you come to Jesus, you don't have to be a sinner. When you come to Jesus Christ, he can cleanse you from your sin. And you know, the Bible says a fool mocks at, skin, uh, at sin. A fool mocks, they scoff at sin. Because they don't see that fornication is wrong. They don't see that drinking, that getting drunk is wrong. But my friends, a lot of people are comparing themselves to someone rather than to God's law. Because a lot of people here may think that they're on their way to heaven or that it's just gonna pan out in the end. But my friends, a lot of people are comparing themselves to like a Hitler. I'm no Hitler, so I'm not going to hell. I didn't murder four million Jews. So why would God even deem me worthy of hell? Well, you know, the Bible says most men proclaim their own goodness. Most men proclaim their own goodness. So if you can't even look at yourself as wicked as you are in the sight of God's law, there's only hope for you when you repent, when you, when you humble yourself. There's no hope for you when you can't see anything wrong with yourself. When you can't examine yourself before God. Because the Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You see, have any of you been near a know-it-all and a group of friends and it's so hard to talk to him or her because they already know it all, so to speak? You know, that, that's, that's what you're like before God. You think that you know best. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is death. That's what the Bible says. You think that your way of living will have no rep repercussions. It, it will have no consequences. Exactly, the Bible says that, that sin is pleasurable for a season. But what happens? What happens after you die? You know, I, I won't deny, yes, when I was a sinner, 
sin is very pleasurable. But that's why we don't live for the pleasures of this world. Because the, the pleasures that you enjoy in this world will all perish one day. But it's so foolish to live for the pleasures of this world. To live for the pleasures of this world that are all, that are all passing, that are all fleeting. And my friends, Jesus Christ, he can give you that eternal hope to where you want to live for the kingdom to come. You know, when you come to the cross, when you come to the cross and go through it, he'll give you desires to live for him, to live holy. It won't be something, because a lot of people may think, I don't ever see myself doing what he's doing. I don't ever see myself being born again. But my friends, it's because of what he's done in, in, inside of me. It's what he's done to my heart. He changed my heart. You know, yes, it may sound foolish to you, sir, but the, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who perish. You know, we don't come out here. We don't come out here to, to show our good works. We don't come out here to boast in ourselves. We boast in Christ. We boast of what he's done through us, what he's done to us. And my friends, a lot of people, they're just, they're just in, in this line because they don't have anything to hope for in this world. They're, they're in this line. Like I said, I don't know who you're coming to see, so I can't speak on the person in there. But my friends, a lot of people just live for the pleasure of this world because they have nothing going for them. A lot of people claim to be depressed. A lot of people say they're suicidal. But my friends, there's already been a cure for that for 2,000 years. But the reason why you don't want Jesus is because, because you, 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 you have your pleasures. You think that your temporal pleasures will solve your, your eternal your eternal problem. Well, temporary pleasures will not solve your spiritual problems. You can't fix something that is carnal with something that is carnal. You have to fix it with something that is spiritual. And Jesus Christ, he's already given us the cure and that's his salvation. You know, when Jesus saves you from your sin, when Jesus saves you from your sin, it's a very beautiful thing. It's something not to be regretted. It's something not to be repented of. But my friends, this world, this world would blind you. This world would distract you from what's truly important. This world will, and, my, and, and what I mean by that is, when's the last time you thought about your eternity? When's the last time you thought about your eternal salvation? When's the last time you thought about your death? And yes, death is death. Death may be not a good a good topic to talk about for someone who is a sinner. But my friends, it's only the beginning of a new life for those who have given their lives to Jesus. But my friends, the reason why people don't want to talk about death is because everyone fears death. You know, just like someone who is traumatic, who, who is very scared of bees. They're scared of bees because of the stinger. But you remove those stingers from, that, from those bees and there's nothing to be scared of anymore. And you know, Jesus, he actually says, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Because Jesus rose from the grave, we have no longer need to be feared, uh, fearful of death. Death has lost its stinger. You don't want to perish. No, you don't want to perish. You don't know what you're saying. You don't know what you're saying. You may you may sound that way in front of your friends because it, it, it's funny to them, but it, it's not it's not a funny thing that people are going to hell. We don't we don't take this lightly. We don't we take the gospel out here with sobriety in our hearts because I guarantee you this. If you were to be required of your soul right now, if you were to die in your sin right now, you would not be sh chanting, perish. In fact, Jesus says, repent or perish. He says it twice. One question to you, ma'am. Do you know when you're going to die? Hopefully tonight. 
No, you don't want it. No, you don't want to die without Christ. No. Your bucket list is checked off. Well, you must not check getting right with Jesus. You must not check that one off. Because that's the only thing that should be on your bucket list as a sinner. And my friends, for someone to say so foolishly, I hope I, hope I die tonight. Oh, my friends, how foolish could you be? When you know deep down in your heart that you hope that you don't die tonight. Because I know no one's hoping to die right now. You know, unless they're suicidal people. But even with them, Jesus can set you free from that. I can't hear you, man. I still can't hear you. Well, my friends... The reason why people are angry with Jesus, the reason why they don't want to follow Jesus is because Jesus tells them, he testifies of this world that its works are evil. He tells this world that their fornication's wrong. He tells this world that lying is wrong, that stealing is wrong, that coveting after your neighbor's goods is wrong. He tells us that all these things are wrong. And you know, have you ever had someone tell, confront you about your, your addiction, whatever it may be, maybe, maybe cigarettes, maybe alcohol, maybe weed? Hey man, and, and, it, and it's, a, it's a good friend that's, that's genuinely concerned about your overall health. Hey man, that's gonna give you lung cancer. Oh, I know, I know. And then you start getting defensive. Well, that's what people are like with Jesus. They know what they need to do, but they don't do it because they love it. And someone who loves their sin so much, they gravitate towards doctrines that tell them that he's not even real, like atheism, like agnosticism, like other, other different religions. <clears throat> but my friends, one day your excuses will not stand on the day of judgment. One day, all the excuses that you have in your heart to not follow Jesus will not stand on the day of judgment. He wants to pardon you of your sin today. He wants to cleanse you of your sin today. And you know, a lot of people don't want to come to the light for their, their evil deeds to be exposed, just like a criminal does not want to be near an officer. Because they know no criminal just wants to hang around an officer when they're guilty of breaking the law. And you know, if you're living in sin, if you're living in sin, you're a lawbreaker. You broke God's law. And it's no marvel why you don't want to be in the presence of God. Because you know that your sinful life will damn you to hell. But you know, like I've been saying, and it's, it's like a new crowd every 10 minutes, but I'll keep saying it, we don't come out here to just bring, we don't come out here to just bring the bad news. But my friends, you can't appreciate the good news until you see why you need it by hearing the bad news first. Just like, just like someone can't, someone won't be convinced that they have cancer if you just give them a, a prescription or a treatment. The doctor shows them that there's a cancer, there, there's a mass tumor that's forming. But that goes with anything. A doctor won't just have you come in, examine you, and just give you pills? Just like we want to come out here and just tell you that Jesus loves you. We tell you why you need Jesus and why you need to repent. We tell you what, what illness you have and what the cure is. We tell you that your illness is sin and that the cure is Jesus' blood. That he can wash you clean from your sin. That he can cleanse you, that he can sanctify you, that he can justify you, and you can be glorified with him when he makes his return. In your biology book, what do you mean by that? I can't hear you. <clears throat> oh, my friends, your biology books won't do you anything on the day of judgment your science books. None of, none, of the, none of these things will stand on the day of judgment. The only thing that Jesus 
will ask you. One of the things that Jesus will present to you is what did you do with Jesus? Because a lot of people neglect the salvation of God, especially a lot of Americans. It's probably my least favorite place to preach is America because so many people already think they're right with God. So many people think they're already in heaven. They're building their, their, their so-called kingdom here. But my friends, you go preach the gospel in a country that is destitute of the truth, that is not, that is not so caroused in, in, the, in the wickedness of this, these, these wicked places, and they, they'll, they'll want the gospel. Well, you need to repent. You're not gonna be that proud on the day of judgment. Is that supposed to be funny? Because I'm not laughing. That's not funny. Oh, my friends, you're doing all these stupid things before your friends, all these wicked things before your friends will not do anything for you. It's just heaping up more of the wrath of God in your souls. Because the more and more you sin without God's pardoning upon you, it's just doing more damage to your own soul. You'd be better off just ignoring the preacher than hearing something and knowing what to do and not doing anything with it. You know, there's actually people who are given over to their lust. There's those who have been reprobated. But my friends, there's also those who, who are on the verge of becoming given over to their, their lust, becoming a reprobate. Yeah, so many people trash this world. So many people trash this world. What were you gonna say, sir? We can have a dialogue. You don't have to be scared. We don't fight. In fact, Jesus says, if they smite you on the right cheek, turn to them the other also. And you know, people seem to be so intimidated just to talk to Christians, to truly born again Christians. And I'm not saying I'm some big bad guy because I would never fight any of you. But my friends, it just shows you the cowardness that people are so so much of a coward that they won't even have a dialogue. They just say these wicked things and pass on. But my friends, one day Jesus Christ, you won't be able to do that to him. You know, in fact, you'll have to bow before him. You have to confess before him that he is Lord. You'll have to confess before God that he's Lord. And you'll have to give an account for every evil deed you've done. Are you ready to do that? Because let's just say that you're in a stadium, the State Farm Arena down the street with the big old screen. And let's just say all your wicked thoughts were put, plugged into that, that screen to where all 70,000 people could read the wickedness in your heart. All the wickedness that's going on in your heart. Well, you know, that actually will happen one day before the throne of God but it'll be for, be before all of creation. You know, everything that you try to hide, nothing will be hid that is hidden. Everything that is hidden will be revealed. It'll, it'll be made known. You know, and just like that one wicked woman that flashed, that flashed us earlier, you know, how, how wicked can you be to do that to just strangers? You know, you're wicked too. You're just seeking attention. You know, Jesus can give you attention. You don't need a seeker from this world. And I hope you feel ashamed of your sin too, because that's what sin does. You know, it, it's, very, it's very wicked, very prideful. It's very prideful to do wicked things. You know, the boastful will not stand in the sight of the Lord. The boastful will not stand. Oh, turn from your sin. You want to preach, bro? All right. You know, as you're entering into this concert, you're having to be uh, patted down with security equipment, making sure that you're not bringing any weapons or anything like that into the, the building. And it's for good reason, because we live in a sinful world where people are, are wicked. They do whatever they desire to do. You know, there's people out there, they can't trust you. 
You know, you live in a world where people can't trust you. They have to make sure you're secure, make sure you're not bringing anything in the building that hurts someone, to harm someone. Because yep. they, they don't know if you have a wicked and depraved mind or not. And friends, it's kind of like a picture of what's going to happen in, when the kingdom of God comes. You know, because Jesus says that there's only one way to heaven. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those who desire to come to the Father must come through me. That's what Jesus says. And you know, there's only one way. And just like you, you coming into this concert, there's only one way in. You have to come through the security booth and pass conditions. Those conditions being not having any weapons on you. My friends, Jesus Christ has laid conditions for you to be able to enter the kingdom of God. He says you must repent. Amen. You must turn from your wicked ways that you might live. He set conditions for you. And no matter how much you try to do your own thing, if you, if you were to try to just run into this building, my friends, you'd probably get tackled. You'd probably get apprehended, arrested. And you know, one day God, Christ is going to arrest those who will not have him to rule over him. He's going to arrest those that have not obeyed the gospel. The Bible says Christ, he's coming back with, with eyes of flaming fire, taking vengeance on those that know not God and those that do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's going to take vengeance on you, friends. And that's not God's will. God's not will is, is, is God's will is for you not to suffer vengeance. God's will is for you to have mercy, what Man. you don't deserve. Because what you do deserve is hell. Man. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Friends, thieves, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, revilers, drunkards, they'll all have their part in the lake of fire. But that's not God's will for you. So why would you choose what God is not willing for you? Why would you choose to continue doing whatever is just pleasurable to you. When God has told you these things aren't, aren't, aren't right, these things are sinful, they're evil. Yep. You know, Jesus says, this world hates me because I testify of it and his works are evil. And you know, some of you would probably be very shame, shamed if you were for some reason not allowed to enter, if you got rejected, they told you that you couldn't enter and you had to walk away and go home. You probably would feel a lot of shame. Mm. Well, imagine the shame when you're thrust out of the kingdom of God, when you have to stand before God and he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. For those of you professing Christians out here, here, there's a word that Jesus is professing to you. He says in Matthew 7, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into my kingdom, but those that do the will of my Father. For, the, for many will come saying, Lord, Lord, let us sin. And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Oh, you can, you can shout and scream all you want to. But the truth is, the word of God is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. And you can hail Satan, you can throw up the devil horns. But friend, just know that hell is God's hell. The devil isn't reigning over hell. Man, bro. God reigns over hell. Friends, the devil will be in hell with you if you don't repent. So why would you hail someone who is, who is inferior to living God? Why not fear God and keep his commands? For this is man's all. Fear God and keep his commands. For this is man's all. God will bring every work into account, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. That should cause you to tremble. Because imagine if there was a screen out here that was showing all the things you've ever done, showing all the secret deeds you've ever done, all the wicked things you've looked at on the internet, the pornography you've ingested. Imagine if there was a screen showing you doing it. Well, friends, one day there will be. One day all your sin will be, will be brought out into the open. Man. And then you're going to have to face it. There's not going to be, you're not going to be able to run away and hide. You're not going to be able to, to, to put it off and say, oh, I never did that because it's going to be true, my friends. Jesus Christ is going to, he's going to expose all the darkness. And that's what we're doing here today. We're trying to expose the darkness that you might see that you're living in sin, that, we, that you might see that Christ is calling you to repentance. Friends, that you might turn today. Because at one point, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You may not do it today. You may not do it tomorrow, but you will one day, friend. Oh, trust me, friend, you will one day. The Bible says, and God cannot lie. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess. So friend, if you don't do it today, you will do, you will do it at one point. But I just pray you don't do it when it's too late. Man. Because Jesus says he's going to cast those that don't believe in it, that don't obey him into the lake of fire where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus explained that hell was a very real place, a very scary place, friends, that he doesn't want you to go. He says the flame will not die. 
the fire is never quenched. You know, if you want to, if you want to, just an in, in, introductory to the wrath of God, to what hell would possibly be like, just hold a lighter to your, to your arm, to your finger for an extended period of time. Start to feel the burn. That's what hell is going to be like, all, but all over your, your whole body, friends. That's the wrath of God. That's the wrath of God revealed against ungodliness. You know, God rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah because Sodom and Gomorrah had turned to homosexuality, to Sodom. Their sins had reached to heaven, and God was no longer pleased. God was no longer pleased. His mercy, he decided, to, he cut it short. And he rained down fire and brimstone. He, he let his judgment rain. Because God is a God of justice. He's a God, yes, he is a God of mercy. He's a God of goodness and kindness. But he's also a God of wrath. He's a God of anger, friends. He hates wickedness. Yep. He hates sin. And those of you that align yourselves with sin, pretty much pr probably every one of you standing in this line, friends, will admit openly that you're a sinner if you're being honest. But the Bible says that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor sodomites, nor homosexuals, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit God's kingdom. Oh, the proud will not inherit God's kingdom. You can list up, lift up your fist in pride, but friend, you, you, that won't get you in the, into the kingdom of God. I know I won't shut up. I don't obey you. I, I obey the Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason why you have such a hatred in your heart is because you hate the message. You hate God. That's your problem. You hate God. Why do you hate God? Well, you're screaming at me from if you want to if you want to dialogue, I'm, I'm more than open to come dialogue. Come across. We'll talk. We can talk. Well, yeah, but yeah. See, because it's not important to you. See, that your soul is not important to you. That's why you'd rather go in and, and enjoy and it just be just be a pleasure. But friend. Friend, you, you enjoy your sin. Your sin is more to you. important to your soul. That's why you won't come and talk. But if you came and talked, your, your arguments would fall through because you're standing on seeking sand, as the Bible says. You have, you, have, you, have, you have no ground to stand on. Oh, but Jesus says, those who liken, those who hear the words of God and do not do them, I liken them unto a man that builds his house on the sinking sand. But he whoever who hears my word and does them, he I will liken unto a man who's built his house on the rock. And when the storm came and the winds blew, the house that was founded on sinking sand, which is probably all, all of you guys right now, here standing in line, coming to this wicked concert, your house is built on the sand. When the, when the storm came and the winds blew, the house fell and great was its fall. But those whose house was founded upon the rock, the word of God, who actually obeyed God and did what he commanded, the house stood when the storm came. And you know, there's coming a time of testing. There's coming a time of testing. And those who are found wanting, who are found, when, they're, when your life is weighed in the balance, you're going to be found wanting if you don't have Jesus Christ. And my friends, that's what I, that's a cause trembling in your knees, my friends. Because those who are found wanting will not inherit the kingdom of God because you're lacking. You need Jesus, whether you see it right now or not. You need Jesus Christ in your life. You need to obey him, submit to him, and stop obeying yourself and submitting to your flesh. Because let's face it, the only reason you come here is because you want to have a good time. Yeah, I want to go party it up, have a good time with my friends, do what I want to do. But my friend, think about that. Think about that. Think about your actual motive of coming here. You want to just have a good time. That rules your life. You want to, you want to just have a good time, live it up now because we, we just party today and not care about tomorrow. Well, you ought to care about tomorrow. You ought to care about right now. Because what if, just what if, while you're in the midst of partying, you were to die by some misfortune, your heart give out. You just have a stroke. And just, and just, just and what if you were to die in the midst of your sin? Friend, that would be hell for all eternity. Is it worth it at that point? Is it really worth it? No, it's not worth it. No sin is worth hell forever. No matter what pleasure you may get from it, no matter how fun. There was a man that came out here and said, sinning is fun. Sinning is fun. That's what they say. You know, but to a sinner, sin is fun. But that's the mercy of God that he would, give, he would make a way for your heart to be changed. Yeah. That you would no longer like sin. That you would no longer find these things that are fun to you now. 
they would no longer be fun to you. Friend, that's the mercy of God. Oh, my friends, you need to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he might have mercy upon him and to our God, for he'll abundantly pardon. Oh, and mockers and scoffers will come walking according to their own lusts. Man. So many mockers out here today. Yep. So many people professing to know God today. But you're hypocrites. This is the truth. You're hypocr if you're coming in here and you claim to be a Christian and they're in here spewing wickedness, spewing ungodliness, they're not glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ in here. Why are you coming here? Why are you coming here if you claim to be a Christian? I mean, I, I, I would really hope that there's nobody in this line that is claiming to be a Christian. I would hope that every single one of you is just a rebel against God. That's what I would hope. But if there are actually some people in here professing to be Christians, you need to repent because you're a hypocrite. You're, you're standing in the way of sinners, the Bible says. The Bible says literally, don't even walk in the way of sinners. Don't stand in, the, in the, the, the council of the ungodly. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. What are you doing if you're a professing Christian and you're coming and standing in the way of sinners? That's really what the Bible tells you not to do. You'll be blessed if you don't do that. So you, if those of you who are professing Christians, you need to repent. You need to humble yourself because God is not pleased with your works of hypocrisy. Jesus says in, in Matthew chapter uh, 24, Verse 51, he says, hypocrites will be in the lake of fire. What is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is someone, a, a hypocrite Christian is someone that professes the name of Christ but denies him by their works. <laughs> and what are we experiencing here today? Some professing Christ but denying him by their works. Hmm. You know, Jesus, when he says to those that he's casting out of, their, of the kingdom, he's, he's shutting the door in their face and he's saying, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That's what Jesus says. He says, workers of iniquity. After they professed all these things they did for him. Oh, I went, I went, Lord, I, I, I casted out devils in your name. I casted out devils in your name, Lord. I, I did many wonderful works in your name. I gave you the glory. Isn't that the works of God? Is it, wasn't I doing the will of God? And he, he just says, you workers of iniquity, he calls you workers of iniquity because you work lawlessness. You do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. That's the problem. That's, that the problem wasn't necessarily what they did do that wasn't evil. The problem was that they did evil. The Bible says, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned since the beginning. For this reason, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. My friends, that tells you the, the, the works of the devil is sin, is to get you to sin, to get you to live in sin, to get you to love sin, to get you to die in sin, that you might be destroyed. Because the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the devil's goal for you. And the devil hates the word of God because it's the, it's the message of Christ that can set you free from this lifestyle of sin that I was once a slave to. My brother here was once a slave to this very lifestyle that you're living. But Jesus Christ called us out from the darkness and he's calling you out as well. He says, come, all of you who are burdened and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Man. Friend, this is, this is the gospel. Jesus Christ died for, for sinners that you might not live for yourself, but live for him who died for you and rose again. Yep. Oh, my friends, turn from your ungodliness. It won't profit you on the day of judgment. You know, it's, it's, it may be pleasurable now, but it won't profit you on judgment day. You may be walking in there now hoping to get something good, hoping to get have a good time. And you know, you may have a good time for a little while, but eventually you're gonna have to come out and then you're back to real life. Then you're back to reality. Oh, but then you're gonna have to go and try to stuff your life up with more things, filling up your life with more things that'll just distract you just to, to pass time, to pass the time. Yes, pass the time all the way to the grave. That's what the devil would love. He hates the message because this is, this is what is able to save your soul if you believe, if you mingle the words in with faith that Christ died for your account, that you've sinned in your life, you've stolen things in your life, you've lusted and committed adultery in your, in, in your heart against the Lord in your life, and you blaspheme the name of God, professing to be Christian, some of you, you've done these things, and these things are worthy of hell, but Christ, Jesus Christ, came blameless. He never sinned once. 
He came into this world and he was born to a Virgin Mary. And my friends, he was beaten, mocked, and scoffed because he was a good man, because he was good, he was all good, and because he was Jesus Christ, God, the Son of God, incarnate. He was beaten for this very reason, for our iniquities. This is why Jesus Christ was was, was uh, beaten and bruised and put on the cross for our sin. You know, we, we, we take responsibility for that. But if you refuse to take responsibility for that, you'll, you'll die in your own sin. Unless you believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, you'll die in your sin. Oh, my friends, that's not God's will for you. God's will is not for you to perish, but that you repent. God is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering for us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is the mercy of God offered to you today, that you would humble your heart, that you would turn from your wickedness and turn to the Lord, for he cares for you. The devil doesn't care for you. Jesus Christ cares for you. It's why he gave his life for you. It's why he laid it all down at the cross. He gave it, he gave it up freely that you might live for him. Oh, my friend, don't continue to go your own way. Don't continue to be a sinner on your way to hell. Turn from this wickedness. Turn from ungodliness, worship of idols, this idolatry. Turn to the living God. Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ today that you might be forgiven of your sin, that you might be cleansed of your sin. Jesus says, I am the way. You know, Jesus is the only way. There's no other way to heaven. Jesus Christ, he is the only way. And you know, there's no darkness in God. There's no ounce of, of shadow of turning within him. You know, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we have fellow, if we have, if we abide in the light, if we walk in the light, then we have fellowship with Him, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So, my friend, you have to be walking in the light to be cleansed. Jesus calls you out of the darkness, not to be a servant of the darkness, but to be a, 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 a friend of God. He wants to be make you a, a son of God, that you might be adopted into God's family. Oh, my friends, humble yourselves today. Humble your hearts before God. Seek the Lord. Don't shake your head, man, if you're going in here. I mean, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you agree with the message, then you should, you should rip up your ticket and go home. Don't go in here where, the, where there's all types of idolatry. They're not glorifying the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're glorifying worldliness. Don't go in here if they're doing that, friends, because you're, you're just harming yourself. It's not God's will that you do that. Humble yourself. That's why so many people are so proud in, in today's age. So many people don't want to turn to God because they believe that they have it all right. Just as my brother said earlier, they believe that they know it all. Oh, friend, you don't know it all. You don't have all knowledge. But you know, if you did, you would be wise enough to repent because you would know that God is the God of all gods. Jesus Christ is King of all. And one day he'll be worshipped as King of all with or without you. Whether you not you decide to be in God's kingdom because the choice is in your, is the ball is in your court as they say. The, the choice, the entrance of heaven is in your court. Jesus Christ has provided the way. He's made everything. He's made all the preparations. You know, there's a parable in the Bible that speaks about a king that, that tells his servants to go out and call people to come to the wedding. And, the, and, and some went, some disregarded the message. They said they went to their merchandise. Some of them just laughed it off like it was a joke, like, like many of you are doing here today. And, and the latter end went, took, the, took the servant, beat them, and killed them. And Jesus is going to likewise return. And when he returns, those of you who are still on the fence, who are still wavering, those of you who are still enemies of God on that day, friends, judgment day is judgment day for a reason. It's not mercy day. You're going to be thrust out of the kingdom of God. And that breaks my heart to say that, but you're going to be thrust out of God's kingdom into the, the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh, friend, don't, don't let that faith be yours. Because God is not willing for you to perish. God is not willing for you to perish. But that you come to repentance. That you change your mind. Change your, your mind, friend. You're going in here to glorify what? 
What, is, what are you even here for? Why are you here? Those of you online, why are you here? Can anyone answer? Why are you actually here? Because if, if it's not to glorify God, it, it's vanity, it's, it's worthless, it's pointless. You may come here to have a good time, but it's utter pointlessness. Because after that good time is over, then what? Then you go home, plenty for your next engagement of sin, planning for your next time to have fun. And that's just a repeated cycle. Your life is just all about fun, fun, fun. Until death comes in like a storm. Because no one ever knows when you're going to die, right? It always comes in at the, the least expected time. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry that for your loss. Oh, she was so young. Oh, he, he, he has so, so many more years left in him. Friend, death comes at any moment. It comes at, at when you least expect it. It's like it's going gonna, it's gonna to butt in on your fun. It's gonna, it has a few words about your fun. Death is going to come, friends. And what are you going to do when that happens? You have, no, you have no reconciliation with God. If you haven't get, gotten right with, with Jesus Christ, you have no mediator. You have, no, you have nothing. Really, when you die and you don't have Christ, you have nothing. Because you don't even have yourself at that point. Because all souls belong to the Lord, as the Bible says. You don't even have yourself. So you die, my friends, without Jesus Christ, you'll be, you'll be found wanting, weighed in the balance and found wanting, missing, lacking, not having, because you didn't have Christ. Oh, friends, humble yourself. Don't get to you to seek after pleasure. The Bible sp says in the last days, men will be abominable. They'll be unthankful, unholy, ungodly, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Oh, so many lovers of pleasure standing in this line today. Yep, when you call out the sin, they cheer for it because you expose your heart. So many lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That's nothing to cheer for. That's nothing, that's nothing to be proud about. Why do you love pleasure rather than you love God? Why, why do you love pleasure rather than you love God? Friend, it's just foolishness because your pleasure is gonna be taken away from you one day. You won't have it forever. You cheer now in your, in your pride and your sin. But friend, when you die, you won't be, you won't be cheering. You'll, you'll be burning. You'll be saying, ah! You won't be saying, yeah, you'll be saying, ah! Lord, save me from this fire. Save me from the burning flame. But God, he, he, he'll, he'll close his ears. He'll close his ears to your cries. Because you chose to close your ears to the gospel when you were given the opportunity to repent. Oh, my friends, don't you see, don't you see the urgency? God is going to reject you one day if you don't repent now. There'll, be, there'll come a time when you'll seek the Lord and he'll no longer be able to be found. And that's in hell, friends. Because God's judgment, God's wrath, he, he is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. My friends, when that, when that day happens, oh, that's a, that's a fearful day. Because you'll be begging for the mercy of God, and it won't be found. You'll have no more mercy, because Jesus will, will have closed probation. And there'll be no more time to repent, no more space to repent. When you're in, in hell, friend, that's when there's no more chance. But as long as you have breath in your lungs now, as long as you have a, a, a willingness now, friends, there's a time to repent. But as long as you continue going your own way, doing your own thing, God will resist you. God will reject you, my friend. Humble your, yourself today while there's still time. Yeah, we can take shifts. Yeah, bro. <clears throat> oh, my friends, Jesus Christ, he wants to set you free from your sin. But you know, a lot of you love your sin you love your sin and you hate righteousness. You cling to what is evil and cast off what is good. You scoff at the very gospel message that can save your soul. <clears throat> but you know, Jesus Christ, he, he will see, he will expose all your sin. He will expose everything wicked that you do. No, I'm gonna preach, you can talk to him. You can talk to him. I'm not going to listen to you. The Bible says in Psalm 1, blessed is he who does not take counsel from the ungodly. 
I don't fear man, sir. I fear God. I don't I don't care because I don't care if someone came up to me. I'm not scared of you, sir. Why, why are you so angry? We, we don't know anything about each other, but you're spewing all that hatred to me. You're spewing all that hatred to me. How, how, what's hatred about this? Okay, that didn't specify. What, what's hatred about this? Okay, and, and I spent my money to be here. Okay. So have compassion on me, man. Well, good enough, but you don't need to, you, listen, lead by example. Okay, so you're telling me to lead by example, but you're spewing all this hatred no, towards me. No, That's not loving your neighbor. I'm trying to teach you a lesson. I'm just going to continue to preach. I'm not going to listen yeah. to you, sir. Lead by example, not by promotion. Lead by example, not by promotion, says the sinner. Okay. What, what, what is that supposed to mean anyways? Lead by example, not by promotion. The Bible says to proclaim the gospel to all the world, to preach the gospel to every creature. None of you are excluded. None of you are excluded, even if you spent $100 on your ticket or more. We spent money to be here. And my friends, we come here to preach the gospel to you. You know, nothing will go unnoticed through the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I saw someone uh, cut in line, and you know, so, someone cutting in line may seem so small, but the Bible says he, he who comes to the kingdom throughout Jesus without Jesus is like a thief and a robber. You can mock all you want, sir. No, no, no one, no one is going to be laughing with you on the day of judgment. Well, that's okay. Because I have a father because the Bible says a father, the, the father is a father to the fatherless. God is a father to those who have their parents forsaken them. And my friends, you know, there's an epidemic of terrible fathers here in America. And you know, Jesus Christ, his father, our father, can be your father. And my friends, he wants to be your father. But you know, you don't want him to be your father because he will tell you. Let me tell you, this is the, co this is the cost that you have to count. He'll tell you that what you're doing, all the sin that you're doing is wicked and it has to stop. You have to stop your wickedness. Because your wickedness will send you straight to hell. Your wickedness will send you straight to hell. There's nothing to praise. There's nothing to praise the Lord on that side, sir. Saying hallelujah that you're going into this concert is not praiseworthy. And you know, it's so crazy too. Hallelujah is a Hebrew word that many people use. But my friends, a lot of people misuse it. They say hallelujah to, to sinful things. But my friends, we're to praise the Lord in spirit and in truth. We're to worship Him with spirit, with understanding. How many of you are coming in here to glorify sin? How many of you? Well, I'm glad one's honest. Now the next step is humbling yourself before God. No, repent. How about you repent? How about you repent? No, why don't you come to Jesus? Why don't you come to Jesus? Why don't you come to Jesus? Jesus is far more worthy than this concert. Far more worthy. And, and you don't have to come here, you don't have to wait in a line. You don't have to make commutes. You don't have to spend money. He's as close as the mention of his name. So you come to Jesus. This is Jesus is far more worthy. You said you're Jewish? No, we're not all Jewish. But if you're Jewish, turn to your Messiah, Yeshua Hamashiach. You wouldn't say that if you were right with Jesus, man. No, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey him. If you, if, you, if you say such wickedness like that and Jesus in the same sentence, you don't love Jesus. And you may sound that boastful, that proud before your buddies, but no boastful look will stand before the Lord. And that's the truth, man. All these boastful things that you say before your friends, all these evil, wicked things that you do before your friends. What does that middle finger do to me, sir? That doesn't hurt my feelings. 
You want me to go cry in a corner now? Because that, that's, that's not going to work. You're not even close. You're not even close, sir. And my friends, people think that them putting down their fingers and putting one finger up will cause the preacher to go cry in a corner, will cause the preacher to go rethink his life. But my friends, it only stirs us up to preach the gospel even more, to preach the gospel to the wickedness of man. Oh man, your, your middle finger is gonna fall off before God. Your middle finger will not stand. And my friend, you will not stand before God. You'll have to give an account of all the wickedness that you have done. Are you living holy? I'm an yeah. So hey, you're living holy? Yeah, I'm trying to. What do you mean you're trying? I'm trying to like continue to walk different, you know, better, you know, to walk the way I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's my mission. So, dealing with it. so let, let, well, let me say this. Yeah. Even if we don't give you something, right. will you walk? Will you just walk away if we tell you that we're not giving you something? Okay. Now, the answer to that question is this: No. Why okay. would I? Because number one, the word of God is worth more than money. Okay. Number two, I feel in my heart. If you would, if you could, you would. Because guess what? A true Christian in the body of Christ will help another Christian in struggle. This is not my only drink. I found this over there on yourself. It's cold. I picked it up on the scene. Yeah. Well, well let me say, say this. Yeah. Yeah, you, you probably shouldn't because, no. you know, you could yeah. cause someone to stumble, yeah, you know? Not, but, but guess what? Okay, so this is my thing about the giving point. James chapter 2. You can see your brother and sister having you. Yep. And you say to your brother and sister, be warm and go in peace mm -hmm. without responding to their need. How can you say the love of God is in So, with that being said, another Christian is supposed to help the Christian get out. Yeah, and, and I'll say this. I've had a lot of homeless people take yeah. advantage of me with yeah. that. You know, they haven't said that passage right. particularly, but I'm well aware of that passage. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I give as the Lord leads. You know, yeah. but I don't to to strangers on the street. I don't give money. Okay. You know, well, well, see, you know. That's fine. But see, the scripture says Hebrews 13. Be careful how you enter strangers. No, that's Some, true. That's true. Angels and weird. Absolutely. See, it don't matter if you're a stranger on the street or if you are in the church. If a brother approaches another brother and says he has a need, you can tell I have a need. You can tell. Philippians chapter 1, when you give, it's supposed to be dealt with discernment. I'm paraphrasing. Discernment and, and, and the ability to understand the need of the person so you can effectively accomplish the goal. Paraphrasing the scripture. Okay, so with that being said, you can discern and tell that I have a need. You can look at me and tell that my need is sincere. You know what I mean? But see, I understand other people come to you, but other people don't. Not come, not come to you in the fullness of God and Christ. You know what I'm saying? Letting you know, giving you what God is saying. You know what I'm saying? It's worried about the fellowship of the body and how we're supposed to help each other out. You don't have that. It's the difference between myself and you. You see what I'm saying? You can tell by me preaching like, like Paul said, my speech and my preaching is not the uh, words of man's wisdom. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't what he put together, it's what God gave him to speak. He said, my speech, my speech and my preaching is not man's wisdom. It's what God gave him to say. Now, we'll, well, well, let me let me just stop you there. Uh, you know, as far as you bringing up James 2, yeah. if you see a brother in need, uh -huh. well, just you saying that you're a brother, I have to see fruit, you know? Yeah. You know, so I'm not just going to believe you just off your words, but rather your fruit. You know what I'm saying? I had the idea of giving until you break it. Now, I may be John the Baptist right now. Sometimes the Lord see me out to preach John the Baptist. They know it was fire and brimstone ministry. Sometimes, even though see, you don't know me, you find me, but you can tell by my conversation that I need something about God. Well, I know that I perceive that you have scripture. Oh, uh -uh, no, yeah, but I have relationship. I have prayer. I have praise. I have witness. It's not just the scripture. The scripture that I have 
God put into my heart to give me interpretation of it. Because he's giving me the power to remember his word. So how can you help me? Okay, how can you help me? Okay, now, with that being said, now, now, with that being said, how can you help me? Well, are you hungry? I am so excited to see you think about this. You see my leg, my brother. You see the leg. What's that? You see my leg. You see your legs? Yeah, look at it. You see oh, them? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay, no, so so anyway, so I have three DBT with deep vein thrombosis. Okay. They're thinking about having to take my foot off to stop the clots from coming to my heart. Okay, so I don't have insurance. So the hospitals only doing, you know, animal stuff. You know, and so getting the medicine for my treatment, the morphine and the and the, 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 the blood. Okay, so I have to do that myself. They gave me coupons to reduce the price, but the hospital was doing that. So, now check this out. Sometimes you can't walk on this thing. When I go to bed, I'm in immense pain because I've been walking on Like now I'm walking, when I go to bed now, I'm going to pay the price. I lay down on, on, on the porch. Ooh! So, I got some ibuprofen for that power. So, where'd you where'd you find ibuprofen? I was walking around and, uh, and I had prayed. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you know I need some pain for But I did. And so I was walking around and uh, I saw a bottle. Matter of fact, down here I saw a bottle sitting over there. And I looked at it. I saw a guy, I don't know. He just stuff like that. You know, God places things in strategic places to help you out. You know, um, getting off the street. In the making. Yes. Yes. See, he's not going to leave a believer on the street. Because number one, the scripture says foxes have hope. The birds that have missed. But the son of man had no one to say. Jesus was homeless. So that could have this He did that for me. So therefore, if I'm homeless now, I'm really not homeless. Because I already got this thing. It's coming manifest. Not only do I carry the, the logos, the logos word, which is the reading word, but I also carry the rainbow word, which is the spoken word of God to you. Spirit. You, wait, you said what? The rainbow what? Rainbow word. I didn't hear that. Rainbow, R-H-E-M-A. The rainbow word is when God speaks to you in your spirit. The logos word is the word that's written. See, the, the, the rainbow word is the creative word of God spoken to your intuition. The logos word is the written word of God that you read. And what you read may or may not happen because it's synthetic as, as opposed to the creative. You ever heard people say, I'm going to get healed, they read the Bible, and then they die? You heard that? Then they die? Yeah, they, they say the Bible says, I'm going to heal you. So they believe in that and then they end up passing away. Yeah, that's just, that's just not taking it out of context. No, because, because it's synthetic. Well, not synthetic. because it's synthetic. But yeah. It's, it's, so, like, in promises in the Bible, you have all these promises that God is going to. You know, ultimately one day, you know, heal you, restore us, and you know that is going to take place one day. But I mean, now, that's a specific. Wait. <laughs> okay, are we referring to this life? Well, there's an ultimate healing. God can heal on this side, yes, but right. there's an ultimate healing that's going to take place. One right. one day. Amen. It's not even a healing. It's a healing body. Right. Yeah. And that, that's. Yeah. I mean, the Bible does say it's also it's a, it's a it's a healing like a, like a, the ultimate bo the body. Uh, Healing is for this present time. The healing that God provides for now. Okay. Well, now. in the Bible, even in Revelation, you, you can find where it says that, that healing will come the branches of uh, new kingdom. Yeah. There, there's going to be healing that actually yeah. comes from the, even the water. Yeah. The water is going to provide healing. For right. That's true. That's yeah. true. So there's healing in the new kingdom, but yeah. it's, it's not like not like this world because obviously in that world there's going to be no more pain or anything yeah. like that. No That's more right. disease. That's right. But healing is going to come once and for all. Amen. So, my brother, you're absolutely right. You see, but when you read the Bible and it says that God is healing, you take it, you stop taking medicine, blah, 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 and the person gets sick and die. Well, that happens a lot. And the reason why it happens is because they do not have the name of word of God, and God speaks saying he's going to activate their promise. See, everybody. Well, in John 10, it says that my sheep hear my voice. Yeah. You know, so right. I believe every child of God, whether what you're saying, Rhema, spirit or not, they still can hear God, you okay, know. Okay, but did he say something to them about their health? 
Wait, say that again? Okay, if they're sick, did he tell them I'm a human? I still don't hear you. If they're sick, did he tell them I'm a human? He could. If he definitely he could, could, yeah. If he tell them, then guess what? They're good. But if you don't speak to them about it, the miraculous healing doesn't occur. Just well, that's where it comes down to his, it being his will, you know? Right, right. Exactly. Because exactly. God God doesn't just do something because we want it done. He does it with a divine purpose always. And, you know? But, but, scriptures do speak about the desires of your heart. Psalms Absolutely. 21. That align with his will. Psalms you got to delight yourself in him. You know? Right. Amen. Amen. Psalm 37.4. Amen, my brother. We, you know what I'm saying, man? And the thing is that whatever you do, the word of deed, you all to the glory of God and the Father by him. So whatever I do is to bring glory to God, even out here on the street being homeless. When I'm in a place, this homeless situation is supposed to bring him glory, which it does, because I preach to people, talk to them about the word, we pray, you know, stuff like that. So it does bring him glory. It does, whether it's in this situation or out of it, God still, in his, in his majesty is still God, he's also glorious. So, so, so let me just ask this. What do you believe about Jesus? Do you believe he's the son of God? I believe that Jesus is the son of God. Do you believe he's God in flesh? I believe that he was manifest, not God, but manifested in the flesh, in the essence of God. So you don't believe that Jesus was God? Yes. Okay. Yes. Wait, so. Yes. So do you believe that Jesus came as a human like you, you and me? Yes. Human. He was in the flesh. Yes. No. He came as God. But not God, meaning in essence, he is God in spirit. But he wasn't God in the flesh, but he was God in essence, spirit. Spirit. He is contradictory, you said. Uh -huh. so he said he wasn't God in the flesh? Well, it's not God in the flesh. No man has seen God any time. The only well, God in so you don't believe in the Trinity then? Yes! So, Moses saw God, yeah. you know, and so that that shows us that he he didn't see God the Father, right. but he saw God the Son. Okay, well, you know. Now this is a, a, a theological question that people have been going through for years. You know I mean, they've been on this issue for a long time. People have their differences of understanding interpretation. The main thing is that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's the main thing. All the other things, well, guess what? Theologians, studies, all this stuff, my God. The most important thing that we're on the same page when it comes to Christ. You follow me? That's the most important thing. You know, the doctrinal issues and all that, okay, if you want to get into it, fine. The only thing I want to know is the Son of God. Yeah, I, I, it, my, my biggest contention is when people say he's not God, you know? Well, 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 hey, guess what? He is God. Okay, he is God. And I think some, I think some of that is like when they say yeah. that when they say like he's not God it's like they're literally yeah. saying he's not the father in a way yeah, like I said about guys I, and I appreciate y'all coming out here it sounds like that yeah. yeah that's what you were saying you're just saying he's not the father they're different they're, they're separate they're not separate but just different yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a board distinct yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a serious issue that's a serious topic you know yeah that's my guy that's a serious topic we were topic. a day I mean, too late so but you know like I said yeah. Yeah. the calling that God has given people some people have different callings you know my calling you know, it, you know, it's different from yours. I mean, you can say, you guys are called currently to preach. That's right. And you're doing a good job. But nevertheless, you asked me a question. Okay. I'll be up there like almost two minutes. But you asked me a question. My, what, how can you help me? Well, I got to go get my medicine in the morning. And I don't know, man. Just, so just help me. I can get you some food or, or you know, that's what I can do for you. Okay, but you can't help me with this. Six dollars. Oh, I don't have any cash on me. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have six dollars better? Yeah, I don't have any cash. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. You want to give me some food? That's fine. Do you got any cash? Uh, yeah. I'll Absolutely. Walk down there. At Waffle House? Yeah, yeah. Waffle House. Hey. Yeah, because I mean, I don't the, that, you know, like, and I know that I don't deserve that. That's not, yeah. I don't, well, well, the Lord is after you. That's what yeah. That's what
And I don't know if you heard me earlier about, because uh, just like you said, that was a leading of the spirit, how the Lord led us here, you know? And I've never encountered this in my, my 10 plus years of being a believer. I've never encountered someone on the street. No one's ever knocked on my door and said, here's the good news of the gospel. Yeah. Like it's always been me giving to other people the best I can and trying to be that example. Yeah. And now here I am finally, like I get to see two brothers on the street and you're out here and you're convicted. Like, I love it. I'm drawn to it. I love yeah. it so much. Yeah, the uh, Lord draws those who, whom He loves. You know, yeah. he, he draws He draws all men to Him. You know, that they may repent. Yeah. You know, and He doesn't want us to be partakers of this world. You know, and that He says in James five to confess your faults one to another. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so uh, it, it, it was a very beautiful thing to see that humility come from your heart about wanting to confess your. God, you know, it's not mine. It's yeah, not mine, Amen. I don't deserve that. Yeah, I, don't I mean, none of us do. We all deserve hell. I cuss, I drink, I steal, I lie. I'm a murderer, like, but I, I believe I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe well, it. Yeah, There's so, so many other truths out there, right? That like try to convict me, get my attention, TikTok, and people that I'm around. If I'm not soaking myself in the Word, which came from man, and, you know, you hear all the debates. I'm sure, like, how do you know God is real? How, who wrote the Bible? And all these doubts. And my even my own wife. And I remember God might want to use me to save her. And I'm like, I gotta stay with her as a believer. But she was a believer at once, and now she's departed a little bit from the faith. I guess the same way I have, like here I am. I said, yeah. you guys are always in that line. You're over here. And I want to be over here. Man. I don't want to be over there anymore. Yeah, man. But I, I know, like, it's, I don't feel like it's over yet, and it sucks. Yeah, well, yeah, it's definitely not over. You know, God, He's still, you know, it says, uh, I forget exactly where in the Bible, I think it's in maybe Ezekiel, uh, where it says, the years that the locust hath eaten up, God will restore, you know? So the years that we wasted as a sinner, because sin is a canker, you know, it, it destroys our soul, you know, and God wants to restore all those years that were wasted. And it starts with that, the right hand being cut off, you know, like, okay, Lord, everything that's sinful in my life, I cut it off, you know, anything that has to go, Lord, you tell me and I will obey you. Because Jesus says uh, in John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll obey me, you know, and he'll manifest himself to those who love him, like it says in John 14, 21, you know? So those who actually, like, just like a husband and a wife, you know, they're not gonna be vulnerable to each other if there's no opening up, if there's no uh, loving each other, you know? Just like with Jesus Christ, he's not gonna manifest himself to those who don't truly love him, you know? So if, you know, that's beautiful what you said, that you were in that line and, you know, the Holy Spirit convicted you, you know, praise God for that. And that, it doesn't just, it doesn't start and end there you know it starts there and it should end with you walking through the cross because some people get to the cross they see what it takes to follow jesus and then they just don't they don't go all the way through the cross you know it's been me yeah yeah i'm ashamed of that amen and you know jesus he says uh those and that's good that you're ashamed of your sin you want to be ashamed of your sin not of jesus you know he says those who are ashamed of me I, I will also be ashamed of them. So it's good that you made that step of faith and came over here, you know? Um, and if and if I could ask, um, what did you, and don't don't feel pressured or anything by me, but did you not go in that concert because of the preaching of the cross or did you already go in and know? Well, I was in there. Okay, I, okay. I had a lot of alcohol, which I normally yeah. don't partake in alcohol, mm -hmm. but I, like, it's not my vice. Like, yeah. it's not, it's like my friends are like, hey, let's drink, I'm off work tomorrow. Yeah. I had the opportunity. I don't know a single word of a single lyric in that play. They, they did some cover songs. I knew those. I'll admit yeah. that. I, I found I was raising my hands and jumping around, bumping into people. I had a good time, but I like my heart while I'm in there is like, I don't renounce Christ. And I get praise to God. Like, that's not mine. Like, that's mm. not my strength. But I'm thankful that I guess like I'm in there and enjoying like the rhythm of the music while also protecting my ear gate from the lyrics that might be coming from the vocals. And so, like, I, I'm, I'm enjoying myself with my friends. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, these guys, like, they're incredible. They're my brothers, and I, I love them. And if I guess if God told me to stay away from them, I would. Yeah. And I haven't, maybe I haven't heard that. Maybe I have. I, I'm not confident that I have. Yeah. Um, not just because of how they've, like, taken care of me, but, like, uh, just the love. The love, the genuine love. It's like God has that, his hand on their life as well. And um, to get to be the, around them is a blessing for me. So... It's yeah. not an excuse to come to here, though. Yeah. It's not an excuse to come and partake in, in, in acts of evilness. And right. I believe that, and I'm trying to, like, trying to work that out, you know, because it's like we only have word of mouth from other believers and what we read of what is actually true. And I'm not trying to talk too much because... No, you're good. Oh, you're good. You know, the proverb says the overflow of the heart, like, it's not right, right? Like, I want, I want God to 
speak only. I don't. I don't want to hear my own tongue. Yeah. I'm so not, I'm not here to preach to you. Like no, you good. I want to be chained, man. I want. Like I said, I want to be on this side. And, uh, yeah, man. Well, you know, um, it starts with just wanting to do it, or it starts with the desire to want to get right, but actually going through with it. You know, so a lot of people understand. Need is dead. Right. Exactly. So. You know, a lot of people understand that cutting your right hand off is painful, you know, and it leads to procrastination and never doing it because of that pain, you know. So if if you just just do it quickly, just say, okay, Lord, I, I just want to surrender all my sin now, you know, he'll heal. He'll heal you because he's a God of restoration. He'll heal you as soon as you do that. You know, he's not literally saying cut your right hand off. Yeah, maybe but, he is, though. Well, maybe it's he all is. about the heart, you yeah, know, right, because if right. it's still in the heart, you're still going to do it, you know. Because the Bible said, I feel it's still yeah. there. You got to circumcise like, the heart. I got to get know? that out because, yeah. like smoking weed, I, I've come to terms with. I'm, I'm not trying to accomplish anything other than be near God, but I want to be sober-minded. Yeah. Because the Bible says, like drunkards, right? And that's me. Not a completely in the state. I've come out of it, but I'm definitely, like I said, inebriated is the word. Like I yeah. feel the effects of alcohol under me. Yeah. They, oh, Jesus drank wine. Like, yeah, he did, and he he made wine out of water and. And back in the, like we can go through the, the arguments but i don't know why i'm like i'm just excited to be near you guys like, yeah I'm praise god to, to be near other believers that believe in the same christ Amen. And, and it's not like i'm looking affirmation for me from you um you, know, you haven't spoke much and i've heard a lot from you and i'm thankful to god for your outpouring I mean, how many people do you encounter a night like this well it's actually rare and that the reason why uh well Again, we don't know people's hearts. They could go home and do this with the Lord themselves, you know. We don't we don't get the glory to see all of that on this side, but we will on when we stand before God. But uh, it is rare for someone to actually humble himself and come from the, the concert and actually come to the preachers, you know. Um, I didn't feel led to just leave after we were done preaching, after everyone went in. I just wanted to hang around and, you know, God works in mysterious ways, you know. He, he, draw, he, he drew you here. But it's also even more mind-boggling because... The Lord, um, he just put on my heart this morning to just go preach in Atlanta. I didn't know where at the time, but then I I, I saw uh, Skyview, you know, that big Ferris wheel over there. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I, I'll go preach, you know. Preach here. And, wow. you know, it's crazy, too, because when we were driving here, it started raining, you know. And we're, uh, <laughs> you were a little bit uh, discouraged on that, you know. Yeah, I was discouraged. Because, <laughs> I mean, of course. you know, we didn't know if, like, well, I knew that, I was supposed to come out here, but he didn't receive the same word, but he was just going off what I said. But there, there was some, uh, would you say there's some wavering there a little or just doubt, just yeah. doubt. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little bit of doubt there, but when we got here, it was like completely dead, not right here in this area, but driving up towards there, there's like Noah's just ghost town. So we just drove around a little more and then we drove past here and there's like tons of people. So we're like, thank you Lord for sending us here, you know? And so. You know, when I was preaching earlier, I was like, you know, if you guys would know how the Lord led us here today, you you would be convinced just like me that God is after that lost sheep that has that has left him. He, he left the 99 to go after that lost sheep. You know, and I was so confident when I said that, and I'm still confident just because it's manifesting before me, you know? It makes me, it makes me my stomach turn, like thinking that a wretch like me would deserve the attention of the creator of the universe. Amen. Yeah, we were, we were, likewise. We were all the same. Oh, yeah, like we're not. We're no, we're no better than you. Uh, yeah. you're all, we're just saved by grace. You know? I, you yeah. have faith. You know? So it's like it's a matter of you know, just realizing that you know you are rich. You know before before Christ, but he, he says that you know what does he say? Come unto me, all you who are burdened, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So he wants to give you. You know this is this is actually inconvenient to you because it's like it, it offers a you know some type of rest, some type of you know enjoyment. But once once you go home, it's just, it's just gone. You know it's like you're, you're grasping the wind, but Christ yeah. offers you the, the true rest. You know. We have joy, the, the, not the joy, the peace that the world gives you, but it's like the, the peace that God gives you, you know, the peace he gives you, you know, the, not that the world gives. And he, that, he, nothing can take that joy away. Once you have that joy, nothing can take it away, you know. And that's what God wants to give you, is to give you that joy. Yeah. And, you know, the question is, too, that I that I pose to people when they're in this state right now of, of wanting to repent um, is if Jesus were standing right before you right now, which he is in the midst of believers, but in physical form like he was 2,000 years ago, and he said, what's your name, by the way? I'm Jonathan. Jonathan Christian. Christian. Matthew. So, Matthew. <laughs> so if he were to say, Jonathan, follow me, what would be, and don't don't answer me, you know, just examine your heart before God and, and really 
answer God with this, you know, but if he said, Jonathan, will you follow me? What would be your answer to him, you know? Heart is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I want to, I, I want to, I want to overcome, and it's, it's for God's glory. Like, I, here I am. Mm -hmm. Here I am right yeah. now. And the conviction of the Holy Spirit is beautiful, and, you know, I have to go, and I have to spend the night, you know, with my friends, and I love my friends. I love, I love them, these men, and I believe the same, like, God has this hand on their life. They're amazing, and uh, yeah. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be around them. They've done a lot for me, and I, I get to experience. Like right now, like I'm being edified by my brothers in Christ, and I get to edify the wall because they're brothers in Christ who have maybe accepted Christ, and the, the good news is really good. But then those thorns came up, and they're like, ah, oh, well, maybe it's okay to do this, or maybe it's okay to do that. And I'm gonna be, uh, you know, like I'm gonna stand by what I believe. Like, oh, loving God won't send people to hell. Like, who am I? That's what I think. Maybe He is, maybe He isn't. But who am I to judge? Like Paul said, who am I to? to, to to question the creator of what he deems right and wrong and I, I see what he says and I accept it but I'm, I'm also not accepting it by, by doing what I do yeah it, it's not the hearers that say they're believers it's the doers that apply God's word you know so people could say that they're believers but even the devil believes exactly yeah. and they tremble you know and we ought to tremble so if we say that we believe because I, me personally, and this is nothing against you, but this is what Unless I say. I accept your rebuke. That that listening. no one, I don't just come up to anyone that claims to know Christ and say that they're a believer. You know, Christ, he he even said to the Jews, to the Jewish people in John eight. Can I uh, give guys his number? Can yeah, absolutely, you you? absolutely. No, I'm no you're good. I, I'm receiving. It. Yeah, yeah. So Jesus, he basically said to the Jews in John eight, I think it was thirty one, uh, that he said to the Jews that believed. You know. Um, that they're his disciples if they continue in his word, you know, if they continue in his word. But, you know, that's what we have to do. We're, we're not just disciples by name, but in deed and in truth, you know, that's how we assure our hearts before Christ, you know. So, um, you know, if your friends and I don't know your friends, but I'm just saying this, if your friends are leading you to sin, you know, then they're no friends at all because faithful are the fr uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy, you know? So they may pat you on your back, but if that's like to cope with sin in your life, they're, they're just being deceitful, you know? And I don't know them personally, I'm just saying in general, you know? But if they're not confronting you in, sin, in your sin, but rather uh, if they're not confronting you in your sin and, uh, and they're comforting you in your sin, I mean, what friend is that, you know? Andy Minio, you know him, Andy Minio? I don't. The rapper, Christian rapper? I've, yeah, I've heard about okay. it. He's got a song that's called Friends, and he literally says, he's like, that's not what friends do. Like, if you know I'm bugging and you stay quiet, that's not right. Like, yeah. and it's, so that's them right now calling him, but, um, yeah. you know, it's just distractions. You know, the yeah. end, we're in a spiritual world. That's word. exactly what it is. So you, you, yeah, you don't see it, but it's a spiritual world. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, dude. The Lord's after your soul. Satan's also after your soul. He wants to keep you bound in darkness, yeah. you know? And it's like, you're in this dark spiritual room, and there's, there, you know where the door is at, but you're just feeling around for the next thing, and it's all emptiness. You know, you can't see before you where, where you're walking, but there's that door, and that doorway is Jesus Christ. He's the doorway of salvation, and he wants you to knock, and it'll open, and you gotta walk through it. You know, because on the other side is light, so where you can now see clearly, to where you can bring the light of Christ into that room of darkness and pull your friends that are in darkness out of that darkness, you know? That, that's what he wants to do with you. Heavy burden, but he says it take my burden. Yeah. So just, I mean, here, here I am. Like I, they're, they're, I gotta go. They're, my, they're calling me. I gotta, yeah. I, I gotta, you know, leave from the situation. And yeah. I'm thankful to God for this opportunity. Absolutely. And I have yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really, I'm humbled that you came in because me you took too. a step now. You know, and this Man. is God can work with you what you did. You, know, you took mm -hmm. a step to come. He's showing you grace. Now he's, he's, he's gonna give you more steps to take. And that, now yeah. you have the option. You know, okay, am I gonna continue? taking the steps that the Lord is giving me, or am I going to, you know, turn back? You know? Yeah. God wants you to continue forward, you know? Um, and I, you, you should read that, the gospel check that you gave me, because now I was in the same place, in the same place that you're in at one point in time in my life. I was a professing Christian, you know, I, I, I knew all of the scriptures, but I had never been, I didn't have the heart change. And that's, you know, right now it's like, when you, as you're in the world, you know, you have to have that change of heart, that, that God has to give you. It's like, you can't muster it up yourself. I tried before, you know, I did my own strength to keep his commands, you know, I, I would fail it every time because it's like you don't have the strength of yourself to do it. You have to have God's help because just face it, we're in we're in a spiritual war. There's enemies that are much stronger than you are. They're gonna overcome you easily without if you don't have the Lord on your side. You know, you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling you, 
being filled with the Holy Spirit, having that, that heart of righteousness, you know, taking the whole armor of God, you have to have that. And that's what God wants to give you. So you know, I, I do appreciate you coming over and I definitely am humbled by you. All glory to God, man. Right? All glory yeah. to God, man. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for your, the time. Yeah. Thank you for being out here and for man. your witness. Yeah. Lord Praise God. God, God. God gets uh, all I the glory. I'll see you in eternity. I believe I will. Yeah. I believe that God started working me. He's going to finish it. And I believe I'll see you in eternity. I hope it's not too painful, but, you know, God will be with me. And he'll it's painful, but he'll heal you. He'll, yeah. he'll heal all the he'll wounds. He's able. And I've been He's through able. a lot of pain, and so, but nothing compared to what my Savior has done for me. And I just, yeah. don't, forget, don't, you know, don't forget about me in your prayers. And I, I will oh, yeah. say my prayer, I believe. Yeah. Um, I confess, so. Um, <laughs> they called me like five times. I'm going to get out of here because they're waiting okay. on me. But thank okay. you again, brothers. Yeah, yeah. have a good one, John. Praise God. That was definitely the Lord, bro, that yeah. sent us here today. Yeah, yeah. Imagine oh, if we God. got discouraged by the rain. <laughs> this one have taken place tonight. Yeah, Woo. You stand, you stay strong in your conviction, bro. <laughs> yeah. I, try to, I try to do that. <laughs> Man, glory to God. You new, sir, about Jesus? I gotta let the devil take my joy. <laughs> Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Do you remember me saying that about the lost sheep, too? Yeah, I do. I do remember that. Bro, that was like borderline prophet, prophet, prophetic. Yeah. Woo! Very vividly now. Wow. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> if he's not real, then why do you have a problem with him? Exactly. If he's not real, why do you have a problem with him? You know, atheistic scholars have actually proven that Jesus is real. Yep, you take his name in vain because you hate him. If Jesus didn't, if Jesus wasn't real, why would you take his name in vain? That's like saying, oh my Santa Claus. But you know, people say God's name in vain because they hate God. They don't take Allah's name in vain. They don't take Buddha's name in vain. They don't take Confucius' name in vain. They don't even take Satan's name in vain. <clears throat> Why would you hail the one that hates you? You know how foolish you sound? Why would you hail Satan when he hates you? No, he yes, he does. You're wicked. Repent. You're wicked. Jesus Christ, he can make you from wicked to righteous. He can turn your wicked heart into something, into a holy heart, to a heart that beats for him to a heart that lives to please him. And you know, my friends, you will not stand, you will not stand boastfully before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You will have to give an account for everything you've said. You have to stand before God, the one who created your very soul. And the question you must ask yourself, is are you ready are you ready to stand before God because he's ready to judge so if he's ready to judge that should mean you should be ready to be judged but you know the Bible says to watch for his coming for you do not know the day nor the hour but my friends if you die tonight you will not be ready if you die tonight without Christ, you will not be ready. Jesus wants to give you eternal life. But you know, those who want their sin will refuse such a great offer. How shall we neglect so great salvation that is so freely given? You know, you come to this concert, you come here to enjoy a good time, you come to spend money to listen to absolute filth. I'm not talking to you, sir. But it's applicable to you too because of your words. Your filthy words prove that you have a filthy heart. No, you're wicked. How about you repent? How about you repent? How about you repent? How about you repent? Oh, you're, you're so foolish to mock God. Well, you're mocking, you're mocking his preacher. So when you mock his preacher, you mock him. I'm not, 
We can tell by your heart. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We can tell your relationship with God by your heart. A fool mocks at sin. At, at sin. A fool scoffs at sin because they don't they don't see sin for what it is. Sin is a canker to the soul. Sin will damn your soul to hell. Sin will will separate you eternally from God if you die in your sin. Do you know when you're going to die? I don't think any of you know when you're going to die. And frankly, I don't think you like talking about when you're going to die. And that's why many people quote unquote live it up. They live it up on this side of uh, this side of eternity when they only have like maybe 50 to 80 years to live if that if they're not dead be if they're not if they're not dead before then. And you know many people will live this way. They'll they'll work they'll work so hard to enjoy maybe 10 to 15 years in their retirement. You work 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 work. We we start out we start out we start out going to school. Then after we graduate high school, oftentimes people go to college. And then after that, you work, 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 work to save up and to enjoy okay, retirement. To, to enjoy retirement for maybe 10 to 15 years. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain this whole world and lose his own soul? And no, you don't want to choose hell, sir. You don't want to choose hell. That's foolish. You're foolish for doing that. You know, I'm glad he said choose though, because some people think that God just sends you to hell. But he sends you to hell because you want to go to hell. And you may not say it with your words. You may not say, hey, I want to go to hell. But my friends, your actions definitely declared a lot louder than your words. I'm sure many of you have heard the phrase, actions speak louder than words. And that's the same thing with God. Because many people say they're Christians, but in their works, they deny him. Just like the Pharisees. They professed to know God, but their hearts were far from him. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from them. How many of you attend church with such wickedness on your hands? You lift up wicked hands to the Lord when the Bible says to lift up holy hands. If you're lifting up wicked hands to the Lord, for example, if you, if you get drunk on Friday and Saturday nights and say, I'm going to church Sunday, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see Jesus and praise Jesus on Sunday, you're lifting up wicked hands to the Lord. Yes, he can, he can pardon you. He can forgive you. But when God, why'd you take God's name in vain? I don't listen to you, sir. Why, why, why do you take God's name in vain? Why are you so angry with God? People say GD, JC, OMG. And you have to ask yourself, why does all of social media why does all of hollywood why does this whole world just blaspheme the name of jesus there's even a song written by this this band called gethsemane and it mocks it mocks it mocks jesus and my friends you have to ask yourself why is everyone so against jesus why is everyone why does everyone hate jesus what, I'll tell you why. Jesus says this world hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. So you literally hate Jesus because he tells you that your sin is wrong. He tells you that your sin is a no-no. He tells you that you need to stop sinning. But many of you, in fact, all of you who are living in sin are of your father the devil. If you're living in sin, you're of your father, the devil. You don't want to be of your, you don't want to have the devil as your father because he doesn't love you one bit. His will for you is to kill, to steal, and to destroy you. 
but Jesus came that you may have life and life more abundantly. But you must come to him. He's the doorway of salvation. And you can't, you can't get into a room unless you walk through the door. And you can't have salvation unless you walk through the doorway of salvation. And Jesus says he's the only doorway to the Father. He's the only way that you can get to the Father. You can't get to the Father through some back door exit, through some fire exit. It actually says that if any man enter any other way, he is as a thief and a robber. Did you come out of that concert? You're not a follower of Christ then. Well, wh why are you judging me then? Do you not see the hypocrisy here? You know, that that's, that's the result of candy corn gospels being preached in the pulpits today where people don't see anything wrong with the wickedness they're attending where they don't see they, they still claim the name of Jesus Christ and they bring his name into such a wicked place shame on you shame on you for naming the name of Christ and not departing from iniquity because Jesus says the Bible says in 2 Timothy So what is love? What, what? That's not. That's not. That doesn't clear. That doesn't clarify what love is. It doesn't specify. Do you know what it means to love? That doesn't. That doesn't define what love is. You know. In fact, the Bible does define what love is. It says love is kind. Love is kind. Love is patient. Absolutely. Are you being kind towards me? Absolutely. Where? What do you mean where? Where are you being kind? I'm being kind by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, you're not. Yeah, you, you look at it as hate because you hate you hate the truth. You are preaching hate. You just said I was preaching love. No. Yes you did. How are you preaching love? Let me hear you let me hear the gospel. Let's hear the gospel. Love is love is love. That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. That's 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. What do you mean, where, where am I? I'm right here. Yes, I have read the whole entire Bible. I'm preaching the gospel. You come over here. Why, why, I am preaching love. I'm not scared. I don't fear man, I fear God. There's nothing to fear about you or any of these people. I don't fear anybody. The Bible says, any weapon that is formed against me, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God shall hold a standard against the enemy when he comes in like a flood. So I have no need to fear sinners. I have a fear of God, yes. You don't sound very loving to me. No, you're preaching hate. No, you are. Yes, I have. You're not applying the book. That's the problem. What about Deuteronomy? You want to come over here? Let's have a dialogue. Well, I, I want to consider myself lucky that you can't come over here. And if that's a threat, I'm not intimidated. How am I a hypocrite? Prove it. Prove it. Prove that I'm a hypocrite. Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Oh, that, that's the fruit. Read. Repent of your sin. You can't see because you're in darkness. You can't see because you're in darkness. You say preach love when you're, when you're saying all sorts of filth towards me. How, 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 how contradictory. You know, just like someone earlier today, when people were lined up to go into this filthy concert, when they said, love thy, love thy bleeping neighbor. They call me a B word when they said, love thy neighbor. Don't you see the hypocrisy? 
They tell me to love my neighbor and then turn around and call me the B word. But my friends, we're not coming out here to bring railing for railing, rather blessing. And the blessing is the word of God, that it is preached to sinners. And my friends, Jesus wants to save you from your sin. He wants to set you free from your wickedness. The question is, do you want to be set free? Do you want to be set free from your sin? Because God is able, the Bible says, God is able and he will. God will set you free from your sin if you come to him. Oh my friends, it's a loving thing to tell someone the truth. The Bible actually says faithful are the wounds of a friend. So it may, it may sound hateful, it may sound offensive, but the Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. So your friends that are patting you on your back, that are saying, you know, don't listen to him. He, he's a no life. Don't listen to him. Jesus isn't even real anyways. And that, if, that, if that's your friend, that's no friend at all. A friend that's not willing to tell you the truth is no friend at all. I'm a friend to you right now because I come out here to, to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm, yes, I am. You don't know what the love is, the love of the cross. If you knew what love is, if you knew what true biblical love is, you would see this. If it, matter of fact, if you hated your sin, you would see this as love. If you hate your sin, you would see this as love. But anyone who loves their sin will hate the truth. And anyone who hates their sin will love the truth. Jesus Christ, he can give you that hatred for sin to where you don't want to sin anymore. He can give you the strength to be holy, to be set apart from this wicked world. But my friends, you must come to him. You know, as you, as you are leaving this concert and, and, and you're coming out, the conclusion to what you've just done is that you, you've lived in your sin and that you've, you've loved pleasures rather than you love God. And you know, we're still out here because we care for your soul. We don't want you to perish. You know, we waited out here for you to come all the way out. You went in with the message and you'll come out with the message. That's how much God loves you. You know, God is, the, is not wanting you to perish. In your sin, God does not want you. It's not like God's will for you to be drunk, to be inebriated in public. My friends, it's not God's will for you. God's will is that you be sober, you be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, roams around as a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Yep. And let's face it. Some, most of you coming out now, you're devoured already. Whether you realize it or not, you're devoured. You're devoured in your sin. You're devoured in your lifestyle, friends. But you, you could come out. That's the mercy of God, that you can come out now while you have the chance. You can turn from your rebellious ways, turn from your rebellion up towards the Lord, and you can be free, friends. But that's, that the, the question is, are you willing? Are you, do you want to be free? Because most of you love your sin. That's the problem. Most of you, yeah, we're still out here because we love you. We're still out here we're, where we're preaching the gospel. You know, they, they, they crucified the apostles, and you know, they couldn't get them. They couldn't get, I believe it was, was John. I could be wrong, but they couldn't get him to shut up, so they, they had to cut his head off. And you know, we're going to keep preaching to you. Until that, until that happens or until the Lord tells us to go home, but we're going to preach to you in another life. Amen. We're going to preach to you because we love your souls and God deserves the glory, friends. God deserves the glory. Give Jesus Christ the glory today. Don't give, don't give the devil glory. So many people out here were, were saying, hail Satan, giving, God, giving Satan the glory. Well, well they, we, not you, but people were out here saying it. And we're saying that you need to give God the glory. Give Jesus the glory. Because you may not be saying it with your mouth, but you could be saying it with your actions. You could be saying, Hail Satan, with your actions when you're living after him. 
because even Jesus says that he who sins is of the devil. You know, he was he was telling those who professed to, to that to be children of, of God, those who were saying that or thinking that they were children of God. He was t saying, telling them and giving them the understanding that if you sin, you commit sin, you practice sin, you're of the, your father, your devil, the devil. That's what Jesus was saying. He was giving you that understanding. And you know, you may profess to know Christ, you may profess to be a Christian, but are you, what, are you, what are your actions showing? Because Jesus said you'll know a tree by its fruits. Now you wouldn't go to a tree that's producing apples and call it an orange tree. You wouldn't go to an orange tree that's producing apples and call it call it uh, uh, an, an orange tree, friends. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't mis mistake those things. And just like that, you wouldn't call a tree that is clearly evil. You wouldn't call it a good tree, and it can't produce it can't produce good fruits because it's evil. And just like that, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when you have wicked, filthy things coming out of your mouth, it proves that you're a wicked person. But that's why God wants to cleanse you. That's why Jesus wants to give you a new heart with new desires to make you a new creation. Yes, we're still out here because we love you. We're still out here because we care about you. We don't want you to perish and go to hell. Hell is a terrible place. That is, was not designed for humans. It was prepared for the devil and his angel. It was not prepared for us, friends. And it's not God's will that you go there. Yes, turn to the Lord Jesus Christ today. We were once very wicked, just like you. But a moment of time, the repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, He changed us. He made us new creatures, new creation. And He can do the same thing for you. He can do the same exact thing for you. Because God, Christ died for all. He died that all might be saved. That's for you, my black Hebrew Israelite friends. Christ died for every man's sake, not for just for an elect few people, not just for a certain skin color. Christ died for all men. And then salvation is offered to all, but it's conditional. There's an if statement. If you are willing and obedient, Christ can make your sins that are as scarlet, as white as snow. Though they be as crimson, as white as wool. There's an if statement. And you know that if statement is gonna be the determiner. And so many people, you're, you're wicked. You're wicked. You're perverted. And you know, this is this is just the fruit of someone that has a perverted mind. Because what you do, it doesn't offend me. It disgusts me, that's what I will say. But what you do, it doesn't offend me. What you do just condemns your own self. Why do, why do you love wickedness? Your mind, is, your mind is perverted. That's the problem. Your mind is perverted. You know, your middle fingers don't do me, don't do me any harm. But you know what it will do? It'll, your works will testify against you. When you stand before Christ, your deeds will testify against you. Man. By your words, you'll be justified, and by your works, words, you'll be condemned. Yep. So just just know that you're not offending me, but you're 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 condemning your own self. And I and I, I and I I hope that you repent before it's too late. Man, bro. Because nobody, hell was not prepared for people. It was pre it wasn't prepared for us, friend. You were not made for hell. You were made to worship God. And it breaks my heart when I see people that are that are made in the image of God and you've let the devil just use you. You've let the devil make a fool of you. And that's what I see when you're when you're stumbling around out of this place like you're half drunk. You're 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 slurring your words because you you're, you're un, your mind is so not sober that you can't speak properly. Friends, the devil is making a fool out of you. And you don't even see it. Because the devil hates you. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But friends, Jesus Christ came that you might have life. He came that you might have life more abundantly. Yep. Oh, turn to Jesus Christ who loves you. The lover of your soul. The friend that will tell you the truth no matter how much it may hurt you emotionally. Friend, Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. Only he can save you. No going, seeking after more wickedness won't, won't do anything for you. It may be pleasurable, you may like it, you may enjoy it, but it won't do anything for you. Yes, you need to seek Jesus Christ while he may be found. Yes, those of you coming out, you may have enjoyed yourself, but the question is, what was the purpose of it? It, it was all vanity. You know, it's all gone. The, the moment, living in the moment, it's all gone now. No fun now. You're just walking out, going, going to your car, probably gonna go home. But if the moment is over, what are you gonna do now? 
Oh, your fun is over. You better go seek the next pleasure. Better go seek the next high. Better go seek the next event. That's what it is. Yeah. Your life is like you're chasing after the wind. Man, and you'll bro. never be able to grasp it. Man. Because you'll just continually find yourself on the cycle. Oh, I got to go to this next thing. I got I to do the next thing. Man. Until you just can repeat that cycle all the way until you die. Yep. And then you'll, then you'll realize it profited you nothing. It was all vain. It was all worthless. Dross. Friends. Man. I hope you see it now because God wants you to see it. God wants you to have an agreement with him. But in order to be in agreement with God, you need to repent because you're in a disagreement with God. And, and as long as you continue in your disagreement, friends, you're an enemy of God in your mind through wicked works. But God can save you. God can change your mind. And he's given you more, more than enough information to do so. You know, us in America, we have so much knowledge, so much truth on the word of God. But it's, it's sadly, it's one of the most rejected things. You know, in other countries, this, this, this truth isn't so readily available. You'd probably be killed on the spot if, in some Muslim countries for even preaching the word of God. But that's because we, have, we hold a treasure. But you know, when, when, it's so, when it's so abundant, and here in America, you know, you have the word of God in every, probably in every hotel room, there's a King James Version in the, in the drawers, if they still do that. But it's so abundant here, and because it's so abundant, people people take it for granted, yeah. as if it's worthless, and this if this if is just something that, that should be to be laid to the wayside. But that ought not be so, because that's a treasure. What you're holding in your hand, if you hold a Bible, that's a treasure. Men bled for that. Men gave their lives for that. The Son of God laid down His life so that you might be saved, and then took it up again. No no other man has risen but Jesus Christ. Man. Not Muhammad or Buddha. You can have many different gods in your mind, but there's only one God, friends. Jesus Christ came to show us, friends. He showed, he said, he said I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. So you can't get into heaven any other way. You can't jump the fence. You can't try to try to be a good person and, and get your way in that get get in that way. It's not gonna work. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Are you interested, man? You look like you want to say something. The cowardly will not inherit. The cowardly will not inherit. Are coward? They're cowards. They, they don't want to. They don't want to face the, the truth. Don't be a coward. If you're truly against what we're saying, if what we're saying is a bunch of lies like we've heard before, just come and prove us wrong. We're not going to bite you. Oh, my friends, seek the Lord. While he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. You see, there has to be a forsaking because so many Christians, and if, if you're a professing Christian, you're walking out of here, you know, your mind is so perverted that you believe that you can continue walking in sin and walking with the Lord at the same time when it, it can't not be. The Bible says, for a fear of the Lord, Men depart from iniquity, depart from evil. Oh, and there, there they go, the hail Satan's coming back out. You know, you're just showing your, the fruit of your heart. You're just showing where your heart is. And you know, I actually, I think I respect you more than those, I, I respect those who just say, openly say hail Satan, more than the Christians that, that claim to know Christ and are participating in wickedness. So you're, you're actually just being bold and you're being honest. I pray that you take that honesty and humble yourself and turn to the Lord, because Satan is a, is a is not someone who's worthy to be worshipped. Only Jesus Christ is worthy to be worshipped. Amen. So turn your turn your your hailing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be hailed, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessing and honor upon Him. Not not Satan, friends. Oh, but turn to the Lord and give Him glory, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you want, if if, if you if you just came and you're trying to get pictures, you ought you ought to just come and talk. And, and stop, because that, that's kind of strange, you know, taking pictures of people in public like that. That's kind of strange. Well, wh why is your mouth so filthy? And why, why is, yeah, why, why is there so much hatred in your heart? I mean, it just kind of, it just, it just doesn't really make sense to me. But you know, the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Oh, there it goes. 
demons, demons manifest coming out. thing. Wow. I mean, it's, it, it, it's not too much a surprise seeing what we're what we're com what they're coming out of. Rise against the used. Rise against the used. You know, Man. some of you are being used right yep. now. You're yep. being used by the devil, but we're being used by God to bring you to the truth. And you're rising against us. You're rising against those being used by God. My friends, you ought to not be against us before God because God is for you. Why not you be for him? Why don't you be for God? Because he's for you. He doesn't want you to perish. Jesus Christ offers you the hand of salvation, but you reject him. You continue to reject him. Why? Why do you continue to reject him? He cares for you. Give him your life. He deserves it. You don't deserve to rule your life. You've made a mess of your life. You've sinned. You've broken God's law. You don't deserve to rule your own life. Jesus Christ deserves all the glory, all the honor. All authority has been given to him. You surrender to him, not yourself. Don't let your flesh send you to hell. Don't do it, friend. It's not worth it. It may feel good now. It may be deceiving now, but it's not worth it in the end. Don't let your flesh be, be your damnation, friend. Cut it off. If it's causing you to sin, pluck out your eye. If it's, if it's causing you to sin, cut off your hand, cut off your foot, whatever it costs. If it's friends, let them go. It's not worth it. Nothing's worth it. Nothing's worth your soul. Jesus is worth it, though. Loving Jesus is worth it. Because Jesus is, is knowing Jesus is, is having eternal life. Knowing Jesus, and you have a perverted mind. Knowing Jesus is eternal life. Oh, you can know him today. You can know Jesus Christ today. But will, will you be willing is the question. Will you be willing? Oh, so many of you are not willing. I will preach the gospel, die and be forgotten. As long as you get the glory. Yeah, I will preach the gospel, I'll die and be forgotten. As long as you get the glory. Come on, sing it again. Well, I will preach the gospel, I'll die and be forgotten. As long as you get the glory. Yes, I will preach the gospel.